Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Humphrey Bogart and Virginia Bruce in Moontide. Ladies and gentlemen, your guest producer, Mr. Mark Hellinger. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. It is no rare thing in the history of entertainment for an author to adapt his story to the stage or a playwright to accommodate his drama to the screen. But rare or not, it is certainly a privilege for a Hollywood producer to present his motion picture on the air. Techniques differ. Changing sight to sound presents new, unexpected problems. And when I was making Moontide at the studios of 20th Century Fox, I hardly expected I'd be personally presenting Moontide at this theater. But that's the way the brakes fall, never quite as you'd expect. I remember some years ago meeting a youthful actor who had just started his career as a tousle-haired and laughing-eyed comedian on Broadway. His one ambition was to become the funniest man in America. Years later, he scored his most significant success as the tight-lipped gangster in the Broadway hit The Petrified Forest. Yes, that tousle-haired and laughing-eyed comedian was Humphrey Bogart. He appears in our play tonight as Bobo, the impetuous wanderer of the West Coast waterfront. Co-starred with Humphrey Bogart is the blonde and beautiful Virginia Bruce, as the young girl whom he meets so strangely at the brink of death. Their story is one of love in the shadow of an eerie danger, of suspense and violence in an atmosphere of lonely tides and haunting fog. To bring Humphrey Bogart to our stage tonight and to rehearsals, I had to coax him from his sloop down in Balboa and the sailor's life that he's so fond of. When not actually in production, you'll find Humphrey any day around the harbor, in a yachting cap and dungarees, puttering around the boat, drying sails or scrubbing decks, doing his own cooking and washing. And speaking of washing, yes, you've guessed it, in the galley is that familiar package of Lux Flakes. After all, the tradition of seafarers is that everything aboard be stick and stand, and sailors as well as housewives seem to feel that calls for Lux Flakes. Time now for our curtain, and the first act of tonight's play, Moontide, starring Humphrey Bogart as Bobo and Virginia Bruce as Anna. The home port of a hundred fishing boats that sail Pacific waters is the little town of San Felipe, California. It's a dreary place. Even the charitable light of early evening can't disguise the ugly cannery near the wharves the collection of ramshackle stores, and the oversupply of cheap saloons. Along the beach, squatting in the bay between the breakwater and the shore, are half a dozen bait barges. A motorboat has just tied up to one of them. Out of it step two Chinese, a father and his son. You see, Albert? Man's still here. Yeah, sound asleep. Hey, who's dog? Man's dog. Follow him every place last night. Big dog. Mean looking. It's okay. Doc tied up good. Better wake him up. I wake him. Why should he want to sleep on deck? What's wrong with inside? Last night, he don't care where he sleeps. Valley the lunk man. Mister. Mister. Wake up. Shake him, Pop. I shake. Mister. Uh -huh. Wake up. Hello. Oh. Hello. Hey, don't roll over. You'll fall in the water. Water? Oh, yeah. I see what you mean. How you feel, mister? Bad? Oh, I felt better. You big Zelinka, yes? Yeah. Is your barge? My barge. You like it? It stinks. Two, three days here, just like a blood of fresh air. Except I'm not staying two, three days. If I was feeling better, I might like to know how I got here, but I'm not feeling better. No lucky job? What job? No remember last night? Uh, why name Hurley? Oh, this my boy, Albert. Last night? I meet you at Chapsui House. We link whole bottle I find. You say you work for me, remember? Mm. Hey, Dad, look. Oh, yes. Police boat. Hey, any news yet? Not yet. We're still looking. Police boat? Very good policeman. They catch him, maybe. Catch who? You know Pop Kelly? Somebody killed him last night. Murder. Yes. Whoever did it didn't do much. Pop was an awful grouch in a lot of trouble when he started drinking. Still, they choking old man like that. Pretty dirty business. He was... He was choked to death? Yeah. You work for me, mister? Dollar fifty day, bottle of ice wine. And they don't know who did it? No. 
who'd want to kill a man by choking him to death. Pop Kelly might know, but I don't. You, you, Henry. You said you brought me here. You were with me all the time? Sometimes. When you get here, we just go to sleep. You take job, two dollars every day, bottle of rice wine. And could you let me have a couple of bucks in advance? Sure, okay. You good man. Nice job, see? Just sell bait. Bait and tank there. Small bucket, one dollar. Big bucket, two dollar. Understand? I get it. I go out in boat every night, catch bait. Bling here. Come on, Dad. We got three more barges to check. I stop by tomorrow. Good business. Everything okay. Yeah. Sure, everything's okay. Hey, you, Gus. That's too bad you can't talk. You were with me last night. The, the old man was choked. No, no, maybe it's good you can't talk. Come on, Gus. You and me's gonna find Tiny. Hey, how about some service? Yeah. My friend ain't in his room. You know where he went? How would I know? This is a rooming house, not an information. You see him go out? Maybe he's taking a shower. Where the shower room? Down the basement. Nine fifty. Sure, pal. Sure. Cut it out. Will you, Tiny? Take the towel. I said you could take it. Take the towel. I said you could take it. You've got no right to hit me. I'm not a young man. I can't defend myself. Hello, Tiny. Oh, hiya, Bobo. Just giving my friend here a little rub down. <laughs> Lay off. No. <laughs> I said lay off him. Okay, okay. My friend here didn't want to let me loan him and borrow his towel. <laughs> That's no way to act, is it, Bobo? Tiny, did you, uh, did you leave me? Leave you? Yeah. What do you mean? I mean last night. I, uh, kind of hung one on, huh? Yeah. I liked everybody, Tiny. Everybody was good friends. Sure, sure, sure. Now, now listen, Bobo. Let's blow out of this town. A week here is plenty. I met a fellow with a truck, and he's going to Frisco tonight. And that chop suey joint. Everybody had a good time together? Sure, I guess so. Uh, don't you remember anything? I don't remember anything. Listen, you big lug, are we grabbing that truck or not? Yeah, sure, why not? Up north, you'll get a good job, Bobo. Frisco, Portland, you'll get a good dock job. <laughs> it's always good for you when I, when I get a good job, huh, Tiny? I don't know what you mean. Ain't that right, mister? I'm sorry I wasn't listening. Well, what are you talking to him for? Because sometimes I get tired of talking to you. That crack you made. Don't I work? Sure you work, Tiny. You stand in line for hours. For hours, mister, but the job he stands in line for, it ain't for him. Job's always for me, huh, Tiny? That truck leaves at ten tonight, Bobo, from right in front of here. I'll be here. I don't know whether you're kidding me or not, Bobo. You're the craziest guy I ever met. But don't you forget this. It's me, your pal Tiny, that always gets you out of trouble. Every time. Every time. I couldn't make a move without my pal Tiny. Yeah. I'm going to my room. Oh, uh, Bobo, you see a newspaper today? No. Why? Oh, nothing. Just wondered. I want to thank you for making him stop before. Now, forget it. I can't forget a good turn. Now, what do you want me to do? Take a bow? Sorry. I've seen a lot of this world and the people in it, and it's my opinion that when people do a good thing, maybe it'd be better if they took a bow for it every time. And what's your name? Around here they call me Nutsy. I'm the night watchman. Nutsy, huh? Where are you going? To work. I start my rounds down at the beach. I like to look at the water. Me too. I'll go with you. I'd be much obliged for your company. Okay, let's go. Oh, wait, i, I got to get my dog first. He's tied up outside. It's whatever you want, man or nature or the almighty, but it's here and it can't be denied. And you figured that out for yourself, Nutsy? No, a man named Plato figured that out. Oh. Well, keep talking. I don't understand it, but I like to hear you talk. You got ideas. <laughs> I could talk all night, Bobo. But don't you have a rendezvous with Tiny at 10 o'clock? Ah, there's plenty of time. What do you say we have a beer? Well, that's an excellent thought, but I Nutsy, had better... Nutsy, come here, quick. What's the matter? Quick. Down there by the breakwater. Well, what's at the breakwater? Some dame, Nutsy. I seen her going into the water. She just walked right into the water. Downing herself? Is that what you wanted trying to say? I don't know, Nutsy. I yelled to her, but she just kept walking in right over her head. You better run for it, Bobo. Oh, now, why would a dame pull a stunt like that? Should I get the cops, Nutsy? No, it's first where she went in. Bobo. Yeah? I hope you can swim. I can't. You mean I'm supposed... When I step on a kid, I got a truck to catch at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Look, 
she opened her eyes. She's coming, too. Will she be all right, officer? Will she? I told you a dozen times. Get back. How's she doing? Huh? Oh, you. Okay, if I can get her to hold on to a little of this brandy. Oh, here, give me the bottle. Okay, sister, come on. Take it. Take it. Oh, oh thank you. Hey, listen, you, you caused enough trouble for one night. Come on, kid. Oh, leave me alone, will you? Take it, I said. No, a slug, all you can stand. <coughs> okay, you, what's your name? Anna. What's your last name? All right, don't talk. Maybe you'll feel more like talking at the station house. Are you taking her in? Certainly. What for? What for? For attempted suicide. In California, that's against the law. Ah, what kind of a screwy law do you call that? So it's screwy, but it's still the law. How about it, lady? You make it the car? I suppose I tell you she don't have to make it. No? What do you bet? She wasn't trying to commit suicide. Then how do you know so much about it? Because I was in the water. Where were you? You ain't asking the questions, buddy. I am. So what were you doing out in the water? Waiting? She was. Me and Nutsy here was having a drink. She was waiting, and she just waited out too far. Ask that boy there. That right, kid? Why, of course that's right. Is your name, kid? I... I guess that's what happened, all right. Who are you? What do you do? Oh, me? Yeah, you. See that bait barge down the beach? I run it for that Chinese guy, Henry. What makes you think you know so much about this thing? Why shouldn't I? She's my girl. All right, Annie, you're okay, see? And, And now I'm beginning to get sore. Yeah, good and sore. You just had to go wading. You had to go wading. Well, you see what you've done, don't you? Just got the cops down here in half the town, that's all. Such a smart dame. Why ought to beat your ears off? You just wait till I get you home, Take up the dame and come on. Come on where? To the car. I'll run you on home. Huh? The bait barge is closer, Bobo. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, the bait barge. Maybe she better rest there for a while. Well, I ain't got all night. Come on. <laughs> Oh, you still here, Nazi? I was patient. Not very grateful. You'd be surprised, Bobo, how often most men say that about most women. In fact, almost as often as most women say it about most men. Well, what a place to bring a dame, a bait barge. Maybe the station house would have been better. It's not so bad, Bobo, at least not out here. It's like your own front porch here, a nice little deck, a view of the ocean. And a whiff of the cannery. That room in there is still worse. There's a place to sleep and a stove to cook on. What more do you want? Me? I don't want a thing. I'm leaving at 10 o'clock for Frisco. It's five minutes after 10 now, Bobo. Oh. What about your friend? Oh, Tiny's a big boy now. He can take care of himself. I'll drop by in the morning. i got to try some doors. Doors? I'm a night watchman, remember? Huh. Oh, I know. Work all night and sleep all day, huh? Sleep? I never sleep, Bobo. Why, I haven't been asleep since 1936, or was it 1937? Good night, Bobo. Yeah. Now, sit down, Gus. Sit down and sell some bait. <laughs> hey, you. What do you want? I still say a drink of this rice wine would do you good. You need your strength. Why couldn't you mind your own business? Oh, so you feel like talking. My own business, huh? I thought I was helping you out. Leave me alone. Oh, now, listen, sister. I've known all kinds of women all over the world, but you're brand new. And I don't mean that for a compliment. I didn't expect you to say thank you, but a guy can expect a dame to feel thank you. I don't owe you anything, see? And I don't want anything. Not from you or from anyone else in the world. So that's how you feel? That's just how I feel. Okay, then, sister, I won't bother you. I'm going to sleep out there on the deck, see? Whenever you feel like drowning yourself, there's the whole Pacific Ocean. All I ask is one thing. Go nice and quiet, huh? I'm an awful light slip sleeper, and I hate to be waked up. Good night. Good night. In just a moment, we'll be back with the second act of Moon Tide, starring Humphrey Bogart and Virginia Bruce. Did you ever have somebody tell you something and think, oh, that's just what she said? Well, one of our listeners had this experience. I've often heard you tell how using Lux Flakes for dishes gets rid of dishpan redness, but I thought, who, just changing to Lux couldn't make my hands look better. 
Then one day, my friend Mildred brought over her sewing. I was complaining how my rough hands caught on the satin I was hemming, and she said, Mine used to do that, too, until I found out it was the strong soap I'd been using for dishes that made my hands so rough. But a while ago, I changed to Lux Flakes, and my hands are ever so much smoother now, and not a bit red anymore, either. But honestly, I was so dumb I didn't even take that hint. I just thought, oh, well, it may work for her, but I have to watch the pennies. So my hands kept getting redder and rougher. Then one night I was helping clean up after a supper at the church. One of the ladies said she'd rather dry than wash the dishes because they didn't have any luck. She didn't want to get her hands all rough and red. Of course, we teased her, but she did have the nicest hands there. And yet I know she has to count her pennies closer than I do. So that set me thinking, if she can manage it on her budget, I guess I can too. So I got a box of Lux and was amazed how much further it went than my regular dishwashing soap. And best of all, my hands have lost all that redness and roughness. Yes, changing from strong soaps to Lux does make hands soft and smooth again. Lux is so mild and gentle, your hands begin to look lovelier in as little as two to seven days. And just see how little Lux it takes to make a dishpan full of rich, fast-working suds. Tests show Lux actually does up to twice as many dishes, ounce for ounce, as any of ten other leading soaps. For lovelier hands, use Lux for your dishes. It's thrifty. Here's Mark Hellinger and our stars. The curtain rises on Act Two of Moontide, starring Humphrey Bogart as Bobo and Virginia Bruce as Anna. It's six o'clock the following morning in the fishing town of saint Felix. In his shack near the beach, Nutsy, the night watchman, contemplates his morning coffee. At the police station, a tired sergeant tells the county newspaper there's nothing new on the murder of old Pop Kelly. And out on the streets, in a sort of semi-panic, Tiny vainly searches for his friend Bobo. But Bobo is still sleeping on the deck of the little bait barge. While in the cabin, Anna stares at the ocean through a grimy window pane. Suddenly, she hears Bobo's dog growling. A small yacht is pulling up to the barn. Good morning. Good morning. Having a little engine trouble. Is there someone here who could look it over? He, he's asleep. I'll pay him all right. Look, I don't even know if he knows anything about engines. Uh, hey. Hey, what's the matter? What goes? The man's boat. Huh? It's the engine. Runs a few minutes and then conks out. Now, take it easy, Gus. Know anything about marine engines? A little. Take a look. Well, thanks a lot. Over this way. Hey, this is a good engine, mister. It's a honey. Yeah, it was until this morning. Speed it up a little. Okay. Ah. Uh, yeah, I think the fuel line's blocked. Can you fix it? Maybe. I'll be glad to pay you. Well, you show me the tools and you better relax. It might take me a little time. Hey, sounds swell now. You still need a new fuel line. You better stay inside the harbor till you get one. Well, there goes my fishing for today. Oh, uh, what do I owe you? Well, I'll take a buck. Here's five. Okay, I can use it. By the way, my name's Brothers. Dr. Brothers. Much obliged, Doc. Thanks again. So long. Anna. I'm in here. How do you feel? I'm all right. Hey. Hey, what happened? This room, it's all cleaned up. Oh, yeah. And it's my duffel bag. How'd it get here? During the night, you were asleep. He brought it. Nutsy. You want some breakfast? Why not? Nutsy bring you these eggs, too? Well, I traded for the eggs. Somebody wanted bait, and I traded them. Is that all right? Well, I'd sooner eat eggs for breakfast than bait. And I, I found the coffee on the shelf. It's ready to go. Put it on the stove and... They stop shaking. You give me the jitters. I, I sold six dollars worth of bait. Well, maybe Henry will can me and let you take over. Your eggs, sunny side up. Okay, sunny side up. <laughs> hey, where'd you get the pants? They were here. My dress is <laughs> no good anymore. <laughs> you, you look funny. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> Call me when you're ready. <laughs>
You want some more coffee? Uh Uh-uh. Look, it's none of my business, but I never saw a dump look more like a dump in this barge. Me neither. As long as you live here, you'd think you'd fix it up and clean it so it looks decent. Like like that barge there at the point. Yeah, that one looks kind of nice, huh? Curtains and paint. It looks good. Like a, like a home. You feel better today, don't you? Good sleep and full of breakfast. Everything looks different. That's the way it happens. You know all about it, I guess. I know about bad breaks. They pile up. Then all of a sudden, you get full of coffee and eggs, and it's all different. That's enough for you, huh? Coffee and eggs. Mm, sometimes I, I have to have a hunk of ham on the side. Very funny. Oh, you take it too serious, sister. Believe me. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you a few things. Then maybe you'll can understand what I did last night. Why I feel like I do. Yeah? I don't want to know anything about you. I don't care. Okay. I brought you here, you cook breakfast. And if you smile once in a while, you wouldn't be a bad-looking tomato. That's all. That's not all. There's a lot more. You don't have to sell me. I'm on your side. And what does that mean? It means the next time you feel like drowning, I won't try to be a Boy Scout. Thanks. If I see you doing it, I'll just squirt a hose on you. Is that what you want? Wipe down, Gus. Oh, oh, we got company. Go, that's my pal. That's tiny. I'll, I'll go inside and do the dishes. I'm down here, sweetheart. Come on aboard. Don't you shut that dog up. I don't think Gus likes you, Tiny. A dog like that ought to be poisoned. Next to you, he's my best friend. <laughs> Big hero last night, weren't you? Sure. One night you get blind plastered, and the next night you got to show off on a no good dame out of water. Every time, every dame I see, she's no good to you. That's a funny thing, Tiny. Listen, are we blowing out of here or not? Yeah, well, I haven't made up my mind. Oh, yeah, so you got yourself a girl, huh? Well, I found out all about her. She used to work in a hash house. I wasn't thinking about the dame. Are you kidding? Well, why should I kid you? I got a great job here. Two bucks a day and a bottle of rice wine. Yeah, we could have been in Frisco by now. Good dough. We could even... Well, what do you want? I just wanted to tell him I'm, I'm leaving now. Okay. And I'm, well, I'm, I'm obliged for everything. What are you going to do? Oh, find a job somewhere. Okay. Good luck, Sunnyside. Thanks. Hey, hey, did you wash the dishes? Yeah, everything's fixed. Okay. This has got nothing to do with it, eh? So long, Tiny. Hey, what are you trying to tell me? That you're, you're going to hang around here, hooked by that hash wrapper? I said so long, Aunt Tiny. Hey, now, wait a minute, Bobo. You just let your mind go back to a few things. Maybe you won't be so quick to brush me off. Say that again, Tiny. I'll say this much. I'm tired of being the one to take the order, see? One word from me to the cops and... You'll you... never say that oh. word. Oh. I Bobo. said you'll never say that word. Bobo, your hands. Nobody tells me what to do, nobody. Bobo, please. <clears throat> now... Well, maybe you know what I mean. You, you keep losing your temper like that. You keep losing your temper like that, and someday you'll get in the real... Get out of here, Tiny. Get out and stay out. Are you home, Bobo? That's you, that's you, Nazi? That's okay, Gus. Nice, Bobo. Come five minutes later and you'd have missed me. You're going away? Yeah. Gus here don't care for the bait barge. I see. Yeah, but if you want the truth, I think maybe Gus and I both could get used to it. And I don't think I'd like that. The answer may be that you've finally found a home. What? That's right. That's the pal, you're smart. You know a lot of things, but when you speak about a home to me, you don't know me. All of my life, everybody hangs on to me, see, like tiny, like the dog here. But I don't hang on to anybody or any place. I come and I go, and I like it that way. I'm only pointing out why I think you really hate to leave here. Okay. Why? Well, anything might have done it. A word remembered from a dream, or the sight of some washing hanging on the line of a dirty bait barge, or most likely something you saw in this pathetic child. What pathetic child? Anna, of course. Yeah, but you said this pathetic child. I know I did. She's here, Bobo. Look. Hello. 
Hello. Is it, is it all right? Sure, it's all right. It's nice to see you again, Anna. Thanks. Hey, uh, you want a chair? I'll, I'll, I'll get you a chair. You change the whole atmosphere of this place, Anna. You cheer it up. Yeah, I'll bet. I mean it. Here. Gee, service, huh? Well, I got some doors to try. Good night. Good night. So long, Nutty. Uh, that's your bag, huh? Yeah. Uh, where's the music coming from? The radio, that barge down there. Sounds nice, don't it? Why'd you come back here? Because I... Why did you look at me the way you did when I left this morning? How did I look at you, sister? Oh, I don't know. I wanted you to tell me. You want me to go. Well, I'm the one that's going. Fogel, well, what is it? Did I do something wrong? Oh, you didn't do anything. I like you a lot. Maybe you're crazy, but so am I. And it's time for me to go, that's all. But why? Because staying in one place don't agree with me. Oh, can I ask where you're going? Sure. To the first saloon I can find. Come on, Gus, we're moving. So long, Anna. Oh. Gee, I thought you left town or something, Bobo. Where you been? Nowhere. Drink up, baby. I sure missed you, Bobo. Yeah, I'll bet you cried your eyes out. But I did. I've been thinking about you lots of times. Yeah, what happened to the boyfriend? Went out with a boat yesterday. And if I never see him again, that'll be soon enough. Ah, that's what I like about a dame. Loyalty. Huh? Skip it. I should have given him the brush long ago. With a fella like you, it's different. That's what I always tell him. A girl wouldn't have any trouble really falling for a guy like you. Did you hear what I said, Bobo? No. Well, what I said was Hit a girl... Keep. Say, what's the matter with you? Get out of my way. I'm getting out of here. What's the matter? I just thought of something. You can't ditch me like this. I just remembered. I got a job, honey. Two bucks a day and a bottle of Chinese moon. And I got to get to work. <laughs> Oh, Bobo, this is the one. Go ahead. Look around. Oh, I did before. I know just what I'd like. Well, the guy's waiting on somebody else. Bobo. What? When did you come back to the barge? About midnight, I guess. You slept out on the deck again? Yeah, I slept good. Why did you come back? All the time questions. I came back. Now you got me in a store buying curtains. Curtains, sir? This way, please. Oh, we just want material. We like this material here. How much you got there? Oh, 26 yards. Wrap it up. Oh, but 15 yards would be plain. Paint. You, you got any paint? What color, sir? Blue and white, maybe. That'd go fine. Uh, blue and white. Uh, blue paint and white paint? No, blue and white. One paint, one color. I, uh, I don't understand. <laughs> that, that was a joke, Anna. It's over his head. Yeah, his and mine, too. That's okay. I feel good. The paint's down this aisle, sir. For a boat or a home? Huh? Oh, uh. For both, I guess. How do you look, Bobo? They look swell. When I get them hemmed and put the trim on you? I feel like I never felt before in my life, and I, I can't understand it. You mean it's like you said to the man in the store? You mean this is, this is home, Bobo? I guess you know, huh? Know what? You and me. We'll get married. You want to? I mean, honestly. Don't you? you got to know this, Bobo. You don't have to. I wouldn't hold you up or anything like that. Oh, don't say that. Don't you ever say that. I didn't mean anything. Okay. You know what i got in mind is a license and a minister. Oh, I've boy. known lots of girls, Anna. This time it's going to be different. This time I'm getting married. I don't know if I'm going to laugh or if I'm going to cry. Cry? What for? Because for once in my life I want everything right? Oh, you're crazy, Bobo. You're plain crazy. Can I kiss you? Is that against the rules? <laughs> Kissing's okay. You finished now? Yeah. Should not, yeah? Yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, here. Four dollar. Two bottle rice wine. All right? Yeah. But I... I got a partner now. Anna, this is Henry. Hello, lady. Listen, Henry, from now on, instead of a bottle every day, how about another dollar? 
Three dollars a day? Okay. I'll fill up pay tax now. You do good business. Here's your money, Henry. Thank you, lady. Goodbye. Hey, where are you going? Catch more bait. You need any help? Always need I'll help. I'll go with you. Okay, Anna. If that's what you want. Can I, uh... Can I kiss you again? Sure. Oh, we'll do all right, Anna. Sure, Bobo. Bride and groom. Bride and groom. I'll about say, hurry up. I love you, Bobo. I really love you. I'll about say, when you make up your mind. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. supposed to believe that Bobo's out fishing for bait, huh? I don't care what you believe. Yeah, how about running that dog out of here? You run him. You know Gus better than I do. And I guess he knows you, too. Look, why don't you blow? Why don't you leave town? Sure, sure. You will busy? Anything you say, Tony. Anytime a guy comes along, I don't know him from Adam, but anything he says, I'd do it, of course. Oh. Well, they're smart dames, huh? What's the matter, Tony? Am I in your way? Yes, you're in my way and in Bobo's way. Oh. No. Oh. A big O. A capital O. Like a rope around Bobo's neck. Did you ever hear of a guy named Pop Kelly? Kelly? Yeah. He was murdered the other night. Choked to death. Yeah, I remember. So what are you going to tell me? That Bobo did it. I didn't say that. But I know a guy who could have done it. For a long time, this guy and me were buddies. He was a very expert dock worker. And up north in Frisco or Portland, he could make a lot of dough. You listening? I'm listening. Well, it wouldn't be so good if someone picked this guy up for murder, would it? If you're trying to scare me, I... Maybe he did it, and maybe he didn't. Who knows? Outside of me. He knows. Oh, no, no. Just me. That's the way he drinks. <laughs> he don't remember a thing. And that's why I say you're the one to beat it and leave my buddy and my put out of here. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell him. Yeah. Maybe you'll have to, because maybe he don't know about it yet himself. Go ahead. Tell him. Very good work, sir, Bobo. Thank you. Yeah, we'll do it again. Good night. Bobo. What do we do, wake you up? Yeah. I was just sitting here thinking. All right. Mm-hmm. Just wasn't sleepy, that's all. Thinking about a wedding? Yeah, yeah, that's it. I'll get the license in the morning. Say, uh, we got anything to eat? Eggs. Swell, if I can keep awake that long. Bobo. Yeah? Who's Tiny? What's he to you? Has Tiny been here? Has he? No, no. I was just curious, that's all. You sure that's all? Well, Bobo, I... I said I wanted everything right between you and me, didn't I? Listen, Anna... I'm a pretty strong guy, see? Even when I was a kid, I was strong. My hands, my hands, they they made me a lot of dough working on the docks on boats. They made me a lot of trouble, too. Because when I get a few drinks inside of me, I can't remember what I do. You mean like fighting? Getting now, let trouble? me finish. Two years ago, Tiny and I in Norfolk it was, I started drinking. I got into a fight. This other guy, he came out with a knife. I got my hands on him. It's uh, all mixed up in my mind. All I know, Tiny got me away. Maybe now you understand I have to know where Tiny is all the time because Tiny's no good. And I can't trust him. And that's all? So now he wants me to go up north. That's the way it always is. I get a job and slip him a few bucks to keep his mouth shut about that guy in Norfolk. Just enough so he don't have to work. And that's... Oh, Bobo, huh? Yeah. That's all. And I'll talk to him. I'll tell him about you and about us. We could still give him money, not much, maybe. Oh, but... don't worry. I'll fix it. Tiny don't mean to be a heel. Well, I'll go inside and fix you something to eat. No, I've changed my mind. I'll I'll see see if I can find Tiny now. You'll be okay, okay here. I'll leave Gus with you. Sure. Everything will be all right, Bobo. We'll fix it. A bride and groom, huh? They'll fix everything. I mean it, Bobo. Sure, kid. Good night. Good night. Good night, darling.
We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Mark Hellinger and our stars Humphrey Bogart and Virginia Bruce will be back with Act Three of Moon Tide in a moment. What's so interesting in that paper, Libby? Mm, it says here that a large department store found it had a few silk slips over five years old, and you should have seen the rush to buy them. <laughs> we women certainly are funny. How this time? Well, silk is mighty nice to have, but you can get lovely rayons at half the price. And lingerie designers are doing wonderful things with rayon these days. Cutting it cleverly and adding pretty lace and delicate handwork. Is rayon easy to care for? Mm, yes, indeed. Simply treat it the way you would silk. Wash it the luxe way and you get grand results. Some women think rayon can be treated any old way. Washed in hot water with a strong soap and handled roughly. But if they just luxe it the way they would silk, those very same rayons would stay color fresh and lovely three times as long. That's a pretty big promise, Libby. Maybe you'd better explain how we know Lux Dundee's stay lovely three times longer. Well, a famous laboratory proved it. Slips and nighties that were washed the wrong way looked faded and drab ever so quickly. In some cases, shoulder straps were frayed, too, and seams burst off. Yet identical slips washed the gentle Lux way with mild Lux flakes and lukewarm water looked lovely even after 30 washings. The colors as fresh and attractive as ever. So if you want to be thrifty and have pretty undies, too, just give your rayon safe, gentle Lux care. We return you to Mark Hellinger. Having been longtime friends with Humphrey Bogart and Virginia Bruce, I'd like to introduce them to you, as they are in real life, when our curtain falls. Now, here's Act Three of Moontide, with Bobo played by Humphrey Bogart and Anna by Virginia Bruce. <laughs> It's long past midnight in the town of San Felipe. Through deserted streets, Bobo makes his way back to the date barge, his search for Tiny unsuccessful. And curling up on the deck next to Gus, he's soon asleep. But in town, a light still burns in the Red Dot Saloon. Charlie the bartender, Henry the Chinese, and Nutsy the night watchman are listening to the radio. Now to an item of local interest. Down San Felipe Way, the murder of Pop Kelly is still unsolved. Police have a number of clues, but as yet have made no arrests. The strangler remains at large. Commercial fishermen report fair catches of barracuda... Turn it off, Charlie. ...with the market... Yeah. To... Police have a number of clues. Too bad, Bobo, go home. We have a good time if Bobo stay here. I don't know. Don't even say hello. Just comes in, looks around, and goes out again. I think he looking for somebody. You think he's going to leave him? Leave him? They're getting married tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow is now today. Look at the clock. Oh, well, come on. The house will buy you all the beer. Toast? Toast, he says. By all means. I'm going to the wedding, yes. He asked me, too. Myself, I'm to be best man. Now, how do you like that? Best man and everything. Uh, sorry, mister. I'm just about to close up. Well, that's okay. To their health, gentlemen. Their health and happiness. Oh, very good. Well, come on, mister. What's yours? I'm going to close. Well, I want to think it over. You want... Hey! Hey, that's right. He's a buddy of yours, ain't he? Who is? Bobo. We were just talking about Bobo. Why? Charlie, uh, where are the pretzels? You good friend of Bobo? You don't know why? Charlie, uh, let's listen to the radio again. Listen, eh? funny looking. Are you trying to change the subject? Me? What's this about Bobo? What's he fixing to do? Well, he's just getting married, that's all. Married? Him and that hash hustler? Yes. And the best of luck to them both. Sure. Sure. Only Bobo ain't married yet, and he's a mighty changeable guy. Especially if a friend whispers a word or two in his ear. Yes, sir, a mighty changeable guy. Nutsy? Oh, yes, Bobo? What's the idea of staring out here? There's a party going on. I, uh, I, I thought I'd wait for the minister. Yeah, it's about time he showed up. How's Anna? <laughs> Yeah, she's kind of excited, I guess. She she looks swell. 
Bobo, did you ever think about that breakwater out there in the bay? Huh? I was just looking at it. And now I know why they call you Nutsy. Look, I'm getting married. A marvelous piece of construction. On the far side, the ocean side, the sea grumbles and roars and beats its fists against the rocks. But on this side, there's serenity and peace and there's soft moss on the rocks. That's what you mean to that girl, Bobo. Well, all inside, huh? How'd you squeeze them all in there? Now I know how, how those sardines feel up in that cannery. And how do you feel? I don't know. Good, I guess. But why do we have to have all those people? They're your friends, Bobo. Besides, they brought presents and brides like presents. Hey, look. Huh? Well, it's Dr. Brothers' cruiser, isn't it? Yeah, listen to that engine. I know what he wants, but I'm not going to do it. Hey, I've done it again. Fuel line? I guess so. Can I tie up here? Sure, if you want to. It ran so well, I got careless. I'll have to ask you to help me out again. I'm sorry, Doc, but I'm not working today. Oh, party going on, eh? Kind of. I'm getting married in a few minutes. Well, congratulations. The young lady the other day, Hannah... Yeah. Well, I hope you'll be very happy. Thanks, Doc. I'm really embarrassed. I'm afraid I can't very well get out of here now. Do you mind an uninvited guest if I behave myself? Oh, come on in. Bobo, here he is. The minister. He's coming down the footbridge. We're all ready, Mr. Wilson. Bye. Bye. Quiet, everybody. Quiet. Here comes the minister. Well, well, well. This is the groom. Yeah. Five more minutes and he'd have swooned. <laughs> then I'll put him out of his misery at once. <laughs> Hannah? Yes, Bobo? You ready? I'm ready. Well, I... I guess we can get married then. For as much as Bobo and Anna have consented together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God in this company... I pronounce that they are man and wife. May the Lord mercifully look upon you. Amen. Oh, do I love you? I'll love you as long as I live. Grandma. Hey, Doc. Doc. Wonderful party, Bobo. Wonderful. Hey, look, I've changed my mind, Doc. I'm a married man. I can use a few bucks. You take that boat of yours out right now and fix it. Are you crazy? I won't take me long, and she wants me to do it. Anna says it's okay. All right, then. Let's go. A little after eight. Where is he? Where's Bobo? Well, the job took a little longer than he expected, that's all. He'll be along presently. You're not scared. Of what? Well, that's what I mean. I'm perfectly safe here. Bobo's dog won't let anyone get near me. Uh, by the way, where is Gus? He's not on deck? No. Bobo thought he might take a piece out of one of the wedding guests. He tied him up somewhere. Oh, it's still all right. Besides, Bobo will be back soon, like you said. Sure. Well... Good night, Anna. I've got some doors to try. I wish you two all the happiness in the world. Thank you, Nutsy. Thank you for everything. You're smiling. You're beautiful. <laughs> Every time I come here, he's gone. Where is he? Bobo. What are you, Drunk? What do you want, Tiny? Want? Well, it's Bobo's wedding, ain't it? Nobody asked me. He's best friend, that's all. Well, I'm here anyway, so how about breaking out a drink? Help yourself. Where's the dog? Why? I said, where's the dog? I don't know. Tiny, I've got something I want to talk to you about. Yeah, we got married today, Bobo and me. And we want to stay here. We want to have a home, see? Who don't? Bobo's always helped you out, hasn't he? I mean... Well, money. Go on. So if that's what you want, it wouldn't make any difference where Bobo was just as long as you got it, would it? <laughs> hey, uh, you ain't such a bad-looking number at that. So much a week, money. Maybe not a lot, but then you wouldn't have to stay around here, would you? You know, I ain't such a bad guy, baby. Well, I know you're not, Tiny. That's what Bobo said. <laughs> Bobo ain't so dumb. You ain't so dumb yourself. 
See, Tony, listen to me. You've got to understand. You're going to be smart enough. Oh, Tony, don't. Don't. Oh, hard to get, huh? Wait till Boba hears about you, Tony. Get fresh. And who's going to tell him? Answer me that. Who's going to tell him? I'll tell him. Oh, did you forget already? We've got a secret about Bobo, a big secret. Get out of here. Would you want to break that secret? No, no, no. Please, Tony. Get out. Bobo killed Pop Kelly. I know it. And now you know it, right? I don't know. You know it, all right, because I just told you. Wait a minute. You know so much about what Bobo did. Where was his dog? Where was Gus? Where was his dog when? When Pop Kelly got killed. That dog never leaves him. If Bobo fights, the dog fights. He told me. The dog fights for Bobo. So why wasn't he bitten, that old man? Why didn't the paper say he had dog bites on him? You know so much. Because Bobo didn't kill him. Because Bobo wasn't even there. He wasn't there and the dog wasn't You're there. You're crazy. You don't know nothing about it. Yeah, crazy to listen to you. You know so much. Well, now I know why you do. Because you were the man who killed Pop Kelly. Just like you killed the man in Norfolk. Shut up! You killed him, Tiny. You killed him. All right, I did. And now what do you think I'm going to do? What do you think I've got to do? Do you think I can let you tell that to the cops? Do you? Tiny. It's too bad, baby. It's just too bad. Oh! Oh! I'll drift into the barge, Bobo. You can just jump oh, off. Oh, you've got to have a drink. One drink, it's my wedding. All right, then. One drink. But then I go. You bet you do. Give me the line, and I'll tie her up. Hey, why don't you leave a light on? Anna! It's kind of late, Bobo. She might have dozed off. Bobo, here. And I want you to take it. It's $50. Part of it's a wedding present. Oh, now, wait a minute. 50 but bucks. Don't argue. And if you still want me to have that one drink, I... Well, I'll take it right now. Wait, wait a minute. Hey, what's that? What's what? There. Lying on the deck. Again. Anna. It's Anna. Good Lord. Anna. Anna. Get a light. Hurry up. I'll get the flashlight. I. Doc. Doc, it's blood. Get in the boat and start that engine. Doc, is she dead? She. No, Bobo. But we've got to get her to a hospital right away. We better take. make better time by water. Santa Cruz. I left her here. I left her here alone. Shut up and don't touch her. It's her back, Bobo. I've got to be very careful. Stop that engine. Dr. Brothers said you can come in now. Thanks. Are you the nurse that... I'm sorry. I just came on duty. Oh. This door? Yes. Come in, Bobo. Doc. She's still unconscious. She's... Can't you tell me anything? I know nothing for certain. I... I've sent for a specialist. Well, Thanks. Before she went under the anesthetic, she tried to say something. I couldn't quite get it. Tiny, tiny something. Tiny? It sounded like that. Does tiny mean anything to you? Uh, no. No. You're tired out, Bobo. There's a room here you can rest. Uh, there's something I gotta do. It may take me a little while. I'll be back later. Bobo. I'll be back later. <laughs> Hey, would you look who's here, the bridegroom. Hey, Bobo. Hey, Tiny here, you seen Tiny? No, but I... Hey, hey, Bobo, where you going? What's the matter, Bobo? Me, Henry, Bobo. Come in, Bobo, come in. Henry, you seen Tiny tonight? No, see Tiny. Something wrong, Bobo? Oh, I gotta find him, I got to find him. Go, Bobo, sitting on the rocks in the breakwater. He's pretty drunk. Thanks. Wait a minute. Why aren't you at the barge? I can't tell you, Nutty, but you haven't seen me and you haven't seen Tiny, understand? Yes, Bobo, I understand. Who? Who is... Bobo. Come here, Tiny. Bobo. Oh, it was an accident, Bobo. She fell. Come she... here, Tiny. Uh, I didn't do it. Won't you listen to me? Won't you believe me, Bobo? I'm coming, I... Tiny. No, Bobo. No! You've got nowhere running, Tiny. You've got no place to run to. There's only the rocks and the ocean and me. I didn't do it, Bobo. I didn't and do it. what are you running for? Bobo, no, no, no. That's I... as far as you can go. Which is it, Tiny? Me or the ocean? No, Bobo. I can't swim. You know I can't me swim. Me or the ocean, Tiny? Bobo! No! Bobo!
Yes, the sea's wild on this side, Bobo, and very deep. Yeah. Let's hope it can cleanse his soul. I've been looking all over for you, Bobo. Where have you been? How is she? Better, I think. She's a specialist. Please, can I see her? Please. Go in, Bobo. Only a moment. Anna. Anna. Bobo, darling. What happened? Come on, now, don't talk, honey. You're going to be all right. I heard oh, so, Oh, don't Bobo. leave me, Anna. Please don't leave me. Oh, I'll never leave you, Bobo. Never. Bobo, she's in no condition to talk. Okay. Now, you've got to rest now, Anna. But I'll be here. I'll be here. Nurse. Yes, doctor. The specialist was here while you were gone, Bobo. She's going to live. Doc. You understand? It may take weeks, months, maybe. But I think she's going to be all right. Oh. She's going to live. She's... Oh, God, I... I... You don't need words to pray, Bobo. Only a heart. And I think you've got that. <laughs> Welcome home. Come aboard. Hello, Nutsy. Oh, Bobo, look. Our barge, it's all different. Sure, that blue and white paint. Oh, Bobo, let me walk. Please put me down. I want to walk to it. Now, the doc said you got to take it easy. And flowers. Flowers in pots. Oh, that's Nutsy there. I draw the line of geraniums in pots. I kind of worked on the curtain some, too. You see, I have lots of spare time, Anna. Oh, Bobo, if I could only walk. Next week, he said. Maybe you could try next week, he said. Well... You're home, Anna. Here, this chair, it's yours, special. He got it for you all the way from Frisco. Well, well, goodbye, you two. I gotta try some doors. Nutsy. Nutsy, it's just ten o'clock in the morning. Well, I gotta make sure they're all open. You happy, Anna? I'm so happy I could cry. Tomorrow I'll show you everything. Where you sit on the deck and taking the money and where you run the whole business. Bobo. Yeah? In a way, I'm glad I couldn't walk. Because you carried me over the threshold. Into our home. That's good, huh? That's wonderful. Huh. Old bride and groom, that's us. Forever, darling. Yeah. Forever. Our stars return for their curtain calls in a moment. Now, maybe I shouldn't tell you, but I know a lady who has eight pairs of nylon stockings. She comes from Memphis, Tennessee, and she writes... This month will mark the third anniversary of my last purchase of hose. Two pairs of nylon. Prior to that, I had bought six pairs, and those eight pairs, representing all the stockings I own have been in constant service for three to four and a half years and are still in good condition. My friends have been so astonished by this remarkable record that I thought you might be interested too. For here's the secret of the whole thing. From the very first day I got them, I have carefully washed each pair in mild and luxe suds immediately after wearing. By always sticking to that routine, I have saved a considerable amount of money and I'm also the envy of many friends. Friends who probably wish they'd lucked their nylons while they still had them. Actual strain tests prove how much longer stockings last with Lux. Silk, nylon, cotton, and rayon stockings were subjected to rigid tests, and those tests proved that stockings washed with a strong soap or rubbed with cake soap went into runs quickly. Stockings washed with Lux flakes lasted ever so much longer. So whether you're wearing your last precious silks or nylons, or today's lovely rayons or cottons, remember, you can cut down runs, get extra wear with Lux Care. Our stars return for their curtain calls with Mark Hellinger. Our thanks to Humphrey Bogart and Virginia Bruce for delivering such great performances in Moontide. Thanks, Mark. But with John O'Hara's fine screenplay, how could we lose? Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, Virginia. Shakespeare was right. The play's the thing. Don't you agree, Bogey? Uh, you go argue with Shakespeare. <laughs> By the way, Mark, the picture you're producing for Warner Brothers now with Bogey as one of your stars, that was a famous play, wasn't it? Yes, The Two Mrs. Carrolls, a, a psychological murder story. 
How's the script? Well, it's it's not for me to say. Uh, you read it, Bogey. What do you think? Oh, I was scared. <laughs> Serves me right for asking. You know, Bogey's pee, Virginia. I've just yanked him off his boat to go back to work. And when boss brings Bogey from boat, Bogart begins brooding. <laughs> Maybe he thinks you work him too hard. Work him too hard? Why, when he leaves here tonight, he has nothing to do until 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Uh-huh. Yeah, how can we kill a few hours? <laughs> Say, Bogey, what's the name of your boat? Sluggy. Sluggy? That doesn't seem right for a boat. Sounds more like boxing. Oh, so what? Did you ever hear of boxing the compass? <laughs> oh, Bogey, boy, Bogey, reef your sails, my boy. I'm afraid Virginia isn't very, uh, shall we say, nautical. Oh, I don't know. I have my moment. Oh, you have, eh? Do you know how to tell the starboard from the port? Sure. Read the labels on the bottle. Virginia, I think you'd better stick to horses. I understand you have your own riding paddock down in Santa Monica. Yes, I love to ride, Mark. Well, why don't you make a deal with Bogey? He'll take you sailing, you take him riding. Oh, no riding for me. I'll stick to my boat. Oh, but Bogey, you can't get seasick on a horse. Well, I might get seasick on my boat, but at least the next day I can sit down. <laughs> Bogey, Mark told us before that you used to do comedy in the early days. Were you a good comedian? Well, that's uh, not for me to say. <laughs> you saw me, Mark. What do you think? I was scared. <laughs> if, you, if you really want to know how I was as a comedian, Virginia, I laid an egg. Hard-boiled. <laughs> Hard-boiled is right, Virginia, and that's the way he stayed with no complaints from anyone. Well, I see now that our time is nearly up, and I want to tell you what we have for next week. Good. Let's have it, Mark. Our play is Paramount's intriguing story, Sing You Sinners. And our stars, James Dunn, Joan Caulfield, and Bing Crosby. (laughs) I don't don't blame you. We all feel the same way about Bing. (laughs) Sing You Sinners is a play that Bing himself is eager to bring you. Not only because the music is his kind of music, but because the play itself is one you'll love. The story of a happy-go-lucky family whose knack of getting into trouble creates plenty of laughter, excitement, and suspense. I'll take anything with Crosby in it, Mark. Good night. Good night, Mark. Good night, and thanks to both of you. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Bing Crosby, Joan Caulfield, and James Dunn in Sing You Sinner. This is Mark Hellinger saying good night from Hollywood. Any one vital shortage of supplies can postpone victory and cost American lives. And today there's a dangerous shortage of waste fats and greases. Save every drop that comes from your kitchen, no matter how burned or blackened. Strain them into a clean can, rush them to your butcher. He'll give you two red ration points plus four cents for each pound. Moontide from the novel by Willard Robertson was presented through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of the 30th anniversary Technicolor picture, Billy Rose's Diamond Horseshoe. Humphrey Bogart can currently be seen in Warner Brothers' production of To Have and Have Not. Virginia Bruce will soon appear in the Republic picture, Love, Honor, and Goodbye. Heard in tonight's cast were Cy Kendall as Tiny, Norman Field as Nutsy. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Sing You Sinners with Bing Crosby, James Dunn, and Joan Caulfield. It's strawberry time. Now treat your family to luscious strawberry chiffon pie, tender, delicate shortcake made the spry way. Clip sugar-saving recipes from Spry's ad in leading women's magazines for May. And remember that big word for baking and frying success, spry. That's right, pure, all-vegetable shortening at its creamy best, S-P-R-Y. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Sing You Sinners with Bing Crosby, Joan Crawfield, and James Dunn. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.